Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm, warm welcome to the webinar by ITNEX in association with VMware. The topic for this webinar is discover how to maximize your workplace productivity. As you must be aware, in this mobile cloud era, your existing IT infrastructure must evolve to support new and future requirements. That's why end-user computing solutions from VMware and VMware partners address both the cost and complexity of managing PCs and emerging mobile devices. In this webinar, we'll talk about how VMware's Horizon Suite provides workforce mobility, connects end users end user to the data, and applications on any, any device without sacrificing IT security and provides control like no other products can. Our speaker for this webinar is Mr. Girish Raja, designated as Senior Systems Engineer with VMware Software India Private Limited and handling set of named accounts in Chennai. His current responsibilities include designing, size and sizing solutions around virtualization and end user computing, and also cloud infrastructure for his named accounts. His total experience in the industry comes with 13 years, with exposure to servers, storages, virtualization, cloud and mission critical apps, and databases like Oracle, SQL, SAP, extra. Prior to his current role, he was a solution architect and was responsible for storage and PCP DR design and implementation for many manufacturing and banking segment clients that include IOCL, Wellspun, Future Group, Extra. Welcome everybody for this particular webinar on end user computing. This is Girish Raja from VMware as introduced. Uh, I play the role of a principal technology consultant with VMware and handle a set of uh, clients here in Chennai region. So today for the next 30 to 45 minutes, uh, I'll be covering on what is the problems that end users face today and because of which IT also has uh, different pain points uh, because of this end user computing era and what is that VMware can do to solve this particular problem and take us from a PC centric era to a mobile world. This is what I'll be covering in the next 45, to, uh, 45 minutes to one hour. So uh, here we go. So as for IDC, there are three IT eras that have evolved. So the age old thing is that it's all about uh, the mainframe era where we had some X number of apps, the, app, the count of the apps and the number of users accessing it was very less actually in fact. And the more, the biggest killer app used to be those days was our payroll app actually. So those things used to be in a mainframe. The only thing that IT was worried during that time, the priority was all control. It was, everything was controlled. So what we used to do was we, were, we used to work from a uh, access controlled, closed glass door based uh, in, in a network setup or something of that kind. This is what was happening in the first era. Then came the era of client server architecture. We passed away from my uh, mainframe, got into client, client server where our tier, tier based architecture came into picture. We had application tier, web tier, database tier, and the user tier, etc., etc., everything used to come. Here, the IT priorities price slightly changed because there was a sudden change of the number of applications and the number of users accessing it. So, what we end up doing was building up silos. Silos was the second thing that we created, and because of which we had a lots and lots of physical missions crawl. This is something that was happening till the era of virtualization began. But once the virtualization began, the next important thing that happened was multiple changes came and because of which now the change is all about we have landed in an environment where we need to provide a mobile cloud based solution. It's not just a cloud. Cloud is something that we do it on the data center side, right? But when we speak about end users, it's all about mobility. They need freedom. So the change that has happened has led to a different world called mobile cloud. Here the number of users is more than a billion and they access millions of apps Everything has to be controlled by the IT, the problem of IT increase and what IT has to do now is the priority has totally changed from getting into silos, they have to get into something called IT as a service. So once we say IT as a service, whoever is the faster one to provide the service actually wins the race. It is everything is on demand. This is what the era is all about. The era that we are going to speak is in end user computing is all about this particular mobile cloud era. So what is that shaping IT today? 
when I'm speaking about mobile cloud, that should be something that is shaping the entire IT, right? So there are four things. One is your social networking. Second is the mobile mobility, where the users need to access. Third is cloud, obviously the buzzword of today's environment. And the last thing is big data. The, un the, the size of the unstructured data is actually increasing. Look at Facebook, Google. Everywhere you will find lots and lots of data and nothing is structured. Earlier, every data was possible to be loaded into a database because everything was rows and columns. Nowadays, we upload videos, pictures, photos, etc., etc. Database is no more sufficient. We need something else. That is where big data came into picture. So, these are something that is called shaping the IT. So, what VMware can do on this particular thing? How does it play for VMware? What is that we can do to ensure that all these questions for IT is being solved? That is where the virtualization came in picture. What is, what is the power of virtualization? That is what we will look into. So one thing is now the IT adds a pressure to build a mobile cloud world. That is something that is all, that, that has come in. And the other thing is we have to come from, break from the silos and get into the client, break from the client server architecture and get into the IT as a service world. So for these two things, the unique point, the unique point that can position these two solutions together is virtualization. The first thing is, if virtualization is there, one is we can save cost. Second is the agility and to move your business as fast as possible and get into mobile cloud is possible. That is the power of virtualization that we have currently. So with, with virtualization, the possibility of mobile cloud is even better than what we had in the silo, silo world. Coming to my next slide. So once we get into mobile, obviously there, there used to be some traditional apps, right? Like Oracle, Java, SAP, and etc., etc. These apps should continue to run. It should not happen that once you enter into mobile cloud, all these apps are no more supported. It cannot be possible. They also need to be supported. Apart from that, there are some next generation applications coming into picture, like big data, Python, etc., etc. They also need to be supported. All these things have to be fitted into the mobile world. These are some unique pain points of IT nowadays. How can we fit all these things together? That is where VMware came up with a vision. VMware had a vision earlier when virtualization started. The same way we have taken this vision from virtualization to the next level of cloud. So what do we do here? In age old days, if you see PC and laptop is the only end user device that we always speak about. Whenever we speak about a user, we always relate him, relate him to his desktop or a PC that he is using. And that is the only mode of access for him to access any applications, maybe his internet or anything. But in today's world, it is no more PC and laptop. Any, any user, any end user in the world today is, access, is using at least three or more than three devices today to access his application. And the number of applications that he is accessing is not four or five. It's like 10 or 15 a day or maybe even more than that. If you ask me, I, I, use, I am accessing almost like 15 to 20 applications a day. Same thing happens with multiple users depending on their need. It can be professional applications or it might be a personal application. But everything has to fit into a single device. So they are expecting some sort of freedom. So as a part of the end user computing vision, VMware has two strategies. One is the desktop management delivery, which is obviously our Windows PCs and other stuff. And the second thing is multi-device workspace. As the same applications that you normally access from your desktop and desktop desktop can be ported to your mobile users, mobile devices, or maybe tablets or anything. So once we do this, that should be a product which can connect the entire life cycle, starting from your desktop to your mobile devices. Everywhere you should have first IT priority is security. At the same time, that should be controlled for, for each and every user. It should be brokered and there should be a consistency. Like, let him access the same data from desktop or let him access the same data from phone. That should be a consistency. It should not be any way other. It should be the same desktop, not, but not from his mobile. It can be any which way. It can be a harmful also or it can be a bad, or it can be good also. It can be any which way. So this is a vision that has been laid by VMware. So based on this vision, we have created a journey. VMware Horizon Suite is a product 
that will allow you to get this, get into this particular journey so what is the journey are we speaking about so today's world everyone knows about today's world everything is windows pc and it is physical it's like maybe a laptop or a desktop he uses that so this is normally the, an organization where we stand today but what is the journey are we speaking about the journey is all the way going to virtual workspace where we can come out of this operating system use this mobile devices or maybe any devices to act the same consistent data that we used to access from a physical desktop or a physical laptop this is the journey i'm speaking about and during this journey there are three phases of journey first thing is obviously they have their physical laptops and desktops which is today's world we cannot get rid of it there should be some management in place where you can manage your physical desktop and laptop uh, what all things that we can do extra with your physical desktop and laptop how can it is more about a pc life cycle management for us once we are out of this particular era the second second step is to get into virtual desktop where we introduce a little mobility by accessing the same desktop that we used to access from one desktop, one particular machine we can access the same desktop either from a pin client or from a desktop from your house or maybe from a office or a different branch at the same time you can also access the desktop from a mobile or a tablet device also but where do you access you access the same desktop that is allocated to you from your organization this is the second step and once we are into it the third and final step to get into workspace is all about getting rid of all this operating systems and getting rid of all this platform dependency and access your data and application that you need to access without any desktop so today even even in virtual world maybe people would have already gone to vdi in vdi also what we have to, what we happen to do is if we need access to our data we have to log into our desktop desktop is the only way we can access our data uh, official data so how can we access it other way that is where we get into the workspace where the same data that is published to a desktop can also be accessed from your mobile or your tablet devices so this is a three step journey that i am speaking about and this journey is facilitated by vmware horizon suite so when i speak about horizon suite we at vmware as the put forward a methodology the methodology is all about three steps one is transform broker and deliver so what is the stage is what will be the next question so when i speak about transform whenever there is a change whenever is a there is a change of access of certain data obviously there should be some transformation happening right so in the transform stage what we do is we collect all those data that is with the user and centralize it to a single location so that whenever they access they can access from the centralized location when once it is centralized it will be easy for them to access from multiple devices the second thing is brokering so now we have since we have centralized we have to provide it to the users back right so once we provide it it should not be that every data is accessible by everyone one centralized all the data is there in the single location it should not be possible that everyone is accessing everyone's data there should be some security policy some control some brokering that that is happening that is what we speak about the brokering stage and the final stage is once we broker and we have created all the security policies we deliver it to the end user the way they want and where they want it is not just the way they want even where they want so these are the three stages or methodologies by which vmware horizon suite behaves so when i speak about horizon suite it is actually a suite of three products so in the first journey of physical desktops and laptops we have vmware horizon mirage which will take care of your pc life cycle management and much more the next stage is nothing but your vdi deployment for virtual desktops we have horizon view and the final product in the horizon suite is actually vmware horizon workspace so these three products combined together will help you in the journey of starting from pc centric era to a virtual workspace era so coming to the first product in the lineup horizon mirage so what is this mirage is all about as i told mirage is a product that will facilitate your physical desktop it is mainly for physical desktop so what do we do here we can manage your images centrally in a single location but the execution capability is left to the desktop that means you get your native performance 
at the same time IT can control the entire image. So what is that image we are speaking about? Whenever a mission is deployed, whenever a mission is deployed in an organization, it will have multiple things, right? One is your operating system, then you will have your application, you will have some user based profiles, drivers, data, etc, etc. Out of this, if you see the drivers, application and the operating system is something that IT is concerned about. The user profile and the data is something that user takes care of. IT doesn't need them. IT needs only the other three things. So, once we know this, we can layer them separately. Everything in Mirage is actually layered. So, when I speak about layers, it is like operating system is separately. We layer the application separately and the driver library separately and we can isolate them separately. So, what happens is, in a normal environment, if you have an organization with multiple departments and if you need to manage an image, what you end up doing is each department will have their own application. So you manage separate separate images for separate separate users or maybe for departments. But in Horizon, the unique thing is you can have a single operating system image for the entire organization and for each department you can have a separate application layer or maybe an application repository in an image configuration. And whenever a user or an employee joins the organization or if he needs to provision his desktop, you can just provision the operating system that is common to all the departments and the application that is used by that particular department together and then deploy. So what do we achieve here is less images. So that we occupy less storage space, less images and consistency across the organization when it comes to operating system. So this is what we, maintain, we, we call it as IT managing a single image. And once this is deployed, it has to be deployed on your uh, desktop, that is one thing. And afterwards, in a PC lifecycle management, the next important thing is backing up those images, right? You have to back up the particular data regularly so that in case of any disaster, you can restore them. So that is where we have an highly efficient deduplication and synchronization protocol inbuilt into this particular Mirage server. So when I speak about Mirage, everything is inbuilt into the solution. So whenever a data is being sent to the Mirage server as a backup or a restore, everything is compressed and deduplicated and stored on the uh, on the mirror server. So you save storage space. And apart from that, it also I, I ensures that network bandwidth is utilized minimum. Because of the deduplication and the compression that is possible, it utilizes less network bandwidth and every copy, every update copy sends only incremental data. It doesn't send the entire data to your DM, to your to your mirror server. And then apart from that, once that is done, what are all the benefits that you can achieve from Mirage? So the first thing that you can achieve from Mirage is automated Windows 7 and Windows 8 deploy. Windows 7 was supported in the last, la, last la, release of Mirage and in the latest release of Mirage which is 4.3, we even support Windows 8 deployment. And in the next release of 4.4 which, which is likely to come in 2 or 3 months, we will be supporting even Windows 8.1 in the future releases. So we can deploy Windows 7, Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 images from your remote system. We don't need to get into your laptop, install your CDs and actually deploy it. We can deploy it from a single image. The second important thing is endpoint backup and DS. We can backup the endpoint that is your desktop or laptop, put it in a centralized location, deduplicate it and then layer it in such a way that if we need to restore tomorrow, we can restore only a part of the layer that is needed to be restored. We can also do file level restore. Apart from that, in case of any disaster recovery like something happened to your hard disk crashes or maybe some, some laptop crash or desktop crash, you might need to restore this particular data. Without this solution, you might need to go for a hard disk uh, recovery which will cost some dollars for you. But here, Everything can be backed up and kept in a centralized location and in case of a disaster recovery, you can recover it from the centralized image. The next important thing that happens normally in any organization is once in every three years or maybe five years depending on the organization policy, we actually go for a PC refresh. We change the PC. But during the change of the PC, there is a huge bottleneck created. What is a bottleneck? Actually, it is like you have to take a backup of your entire uh, uh, use of data then you have to replace your PC, install your operating system, install your drivers, 
install the data, applications, etc., etc. This easily takes at least three to four days for a single PC. And if it happens to be a large organization where there are some 2,000 or 3,000 desktops, this may take even years to complete. Or you might need to deploy multiple people doing this particular job, which will also have downtime for the user, and at the same time, you will have serious hassles in uh, performing all these things. So what, what does this Mirage can do? Since all the data and everything is backed up to a centralized location, once you have a PC research coming up, you can just safely do an update copy to the latest version, ask your users to just shut down the PC, log, install your new PCs, and then restore the data from your centralized image. So no hassle in taking any backups, and at the same time, the user will feel the same way how it was, how it used to be in the older mission. You will not feel any difference. The comfortability is never lost. The fourth important thing is break fix and savings. Obviously, if at all something happens to your laptop, if you need to re replace your laptop with a hard disk, laptop hard disk or anything, obviously that is possible. And another important thing that is possible in this particular Mirage is the driver issue. So normally in, in Windows, if you see, the drivers are normally the issues that creep up regularly. You might see even 10 to 15 cases normally register for driver not working. Maybe your LAN card driver or audio driver. So in Mirage, driver library is kept, kept, kept separately and attached to each and every user. You can have a single driver, driver library for all the users using the same model of desktop. So in case, if at all a driver goes corrupt or missing from your Windows machine, Mirage client that is installed on your Windows machine will automatically detect it from the device management and go and update that particular driver which will ensure that all those small, small issues because of drivers and other stuff doesn't come at all. Everything is automated to solve. The another important thing is centralized image management, which will ensure that you have consistency of images across the organization. And the last important thing in Horizon Mirage is we can provide bring your own computer facility also. So if at all you have any users uh, bringing their own computers with the mass based laptop, Mirage as a product also has something called as a Fusion Pro, which is nothing which can be installed on a MacBook, and you can run Windows as a virtual machine within your Mac operating system, and you can protect those Windows uh, Windows virtual machine that is running using Mirage. So that tomorrow, if at all is changing its laptop, you can use the same you can use the same the same image to be restored to a new container, and you can feel the same way how how it was working. So that is all about Horizon Mirage. Coming to the next part is Horizon View. So physical environment completed. Now the next step is getting into the virtual desktop, right? So in Horizon View, this is uh, something IDC has predicted that VMware is number one VDI in India, number one in VDI deployments in India. And what they have seen is that in 2013 and 2014, that this can also increase. This will increase actually. The lead between the second and the first position VMware will increase drastically in the years to come. So what is that Mirage can do? Sorry, View can do. Sorry. So in View, it is all about a virtual desktop environment. So when I say virtual desktop environment, who knows better than VMware? That is what I will say. The reason is we have the best hardware or virtualization platform ever. We call it as VMware vSphere. And I believe most of you would have used it also. So using vSphere, we deploy your desktop on this particular vSphere environment so that all your desktop can get the same features what your server gets. So if you do a server consolidation and a desktop consolidation using the same vSphere engine, you can get all those benefits and features whatever your, your server gets can be passed on to your desktop also. So once we have this, we can have a centralized data center where all your desktops can be centralized in the virtual infrastructure of vSphere, and then they can be catered to multiple devices like desktop, laptop, tablets, mobiles, even more than that, you can also access a virtual desktop in view even from a browser. Any HTML browser will support this particular view. And how do we cater this? The brokering is done by something called as a PC over IP protocol. So PC over IP protocol is just like how our uh, RDS remote desktop services behave, but this protocol will uh, is highly efficient over network. So if you have even a bandwidth constraint, 
of accessing your desktop from a remote remote uh, remote place or maybe from a van or a VPN. It can, this PC over IP will ensure that even those bandwidth is even sufficient for most of the users. So, as per our best practice, what we say is even in a single E1 link, when I say single E1 link, it is 1.5 Mbps of link, you can have up to 24 to 25 desktop total, which, which is nothing but around 60 kbps per desktop. That is how efficient this particular PC over IP is. So, what is that we get from Horizon View? One is security and compliance. We can ensure that entire data, the desktop, the image, everything is stored in the centralized location. User has only access to what he is supposed to. Second is he can access it from anywhere. He can access it from his house. He can access it from his laptop, his mobile, or even from his other branch offices. It is not needed. He has to sit, it, sit from his own desk. Third is business agility. When I am speaking about agility, it is like today if you want to migrate from one operating system to another operating system in your uh, physical desktop, obviously it is a time taking thing. But with virtual desktop, everything since it is centralized, the upgrade is nowhere limited to your user. And single administrator managing the entire desktop can do all these particular upgrades on the fly with limited downtime. It will be as a set of a desktop that is getting upgraded together. And apart from that, we can also have mobile and DYOD access, bring your own device access. And at last, we will have OPEX savings where we can save many things. We can, we can, uh, we can have OPEX savings based on one thing is since you have deployed a thin client, thin clients have more uh, better life than your desktops. Where desktops are having like three years of average age, whereas thin, thin clients are being set that it can have up to seven years, seven years of average age. So you don't need to refresh any of your thin clients for almost like seven years. Apart from that, Currently, if you see in a desktop environment, you will have multiple desktop administrators administrating your desktop. But once we get into VDA environment, since everything is centralized, you, you, you don't need to have that much number of desktop administrators. Everything can be administered by a single person. And some more features of view. One is we can have real-time audio and video. You can integrate all your webcam and microphone tra traffic directly to your view desktop so that you can use your Skype, Google Talk, WebEx, etc, etc. Everything works the way how it used to work in your physical laptop or desktop. The next thing is, we have also provided Windows 8.1 desktop support. All, all desktops, the, all organizations that do support Windows 8.1 can port their virtual desktop on 8.1 also. VMware View plus vSphere supports 8.1. And if at all you are trying to do a POC today for 8.1 to check whether your applications are running fine. Tomorrow those POC environments can be smoothly rolled out to your production environments also. It, that it is not, it is hassle free. So for example, if you are trying to create an image for your entire organization, you are trying to uh, uh, install a new 8.1 test your applications, you have created an image. Now you can safely post this particular same image to all your users without any hassle. It is hassle free. Coming to the next important thing in view, Earlier we had support soft 3D graphics and uh, shadow using uh, dedicated adapters. But with Horizon View 5.3, which is the latest release, we can also support dedicated graphics adapter. When I say dedicated graphics adapter, you can add a graphics GPU device directly to a desktop. So if you have any CARCAM applications or any CATIA applications which are uh, which use more, which are more graphic intensive, you can go ahead and either use shared GPU where you can share a single GPU between multiple desktops or if they don't need a shared, a shared GPU and if they need a dedicated, you can also bypass the entire GPU from the ESX player directly to the desktop. That is also possible. Both the ways it is possible. Horizon View 5.3 supports all these things. And one more important thing in 5.3 is Obviously, whenever we speak about VDI, one license that comes in our mind is VDA, uh, Desktop Assurance License from uh, Microsoft. They charge, it is a subscription model. Every year, they charge some 90 to 100 dollars per user or per device every year. This is what Microsoft normally charges if you use a VDI environment. So, how do we come out of it? That is where VMware started supporting Windows Server 2008 R2 also as a desktop. So, when I say Windows Server 2008 R2, 
Windows 8 to the Windows 2008 will be in the back end, but when users see it, they will see it as a Windows 7. It will be an emulated Windows 7, just like how Zenar works today. So uh, you can put all these things, and since we are using Windows 2008 as a desktop, no more VDA license is applicable. It doesn't need any VDA because Windows 2008 is a server operating system. You will be having the data center license for each server. One data center license is sufficient to have multiple or maybe infinite numbers of desktops in a single uh, physical server. So that is what is the improvement that Windows, uh, Windows 2008 as a desktop has made to the VDI licensing. So what, now since Windows 2008 licensing has come into, Windows 2008 is supported as a desktop, the next important thing that questions come, uh, will come is, okay, what about my applications? There are applications that doesn't support Windows 2008. Obviously, even I have seen certain applications that doesn't perform very well in Windows 2008. The way they perform in desktop is better than the way they perform in Windows 2008. So how do we bring that legacy uh, environment in Windows 2008? This will be the normal queries of any desktop user or maybe an ID administrator. So that is why VMware has a product called Synap. So what is Synap? Synap is an application virtualization solution. It decouples your application and data from your operating system. So that it will ensure, instead of having a monolithic, it will give you a modular approach to your entire solution. It is totally an agentless architecture. What and most of the uh, platform and application is supported. Both 32-bit and 64-bit applications are supported. So, for example, today you have a Windows 7, and tomorrow you are trying to move to a Windows 8. Not all applications on Windows 7 will be supported on Windows 8, right? Most of the application doesn't work well in Windows 8. That will cause an hindrance for you to move from Windows 7 to Windows 8, but obviously Microsoft will try to push you to move, move to Windows 8. So what we need to, what during that phase, what we can do is we can virtualize your application on Windows 7 using Synap, convert it into a MSI file or maybe a ESX, EXE file, and then port it to a Windows 8. It will work the same way how it used to work on a Windows 7 machine. That is the beauty of Synap. So it will ensure that your OS migration will not be a hindrance because of application. So, what is the benefits of this? One is obviously, it will be a single file that comes out. You don't need to have multiple, uh, if you install a Microsoft Office or something, normally it is a 3.7 GB directory with some millions of files, right? But here, once you do a PNAP based virtualization, everything will get converted into a single EXI file or EXE file or MSI, MSI file. You can just point that particular file on the desktop, users can double click and they can use it the way they are. One more thing is you cannot run IE6 and IE7 on a single device, single laptop, right? There are developers who still need IE6 and IE7 to run together. So what they normally do is whenever they need to work on IE7, they uninstall IE6 and then install IE7. But with Synapse, both can coexist in a single desktop. You can actually uh, install both of them in a single desktop and users can still work on IE6 and IE7 simultaneously. It is not just for Internet Explorer, even Microsoft Office or Java, multiple Java versions, any application that has different versions can be ported separately and can work simultaneously in a single desktop. This is the key benefit of Tina. And one more thing with Tina is, as I told you, application conflict. You can, it is not tightly coupled between operating system, applications, and data, since we are actually decoupling it from the operating system, Synapse, what it does is it creates a virtual operating system for each and every application. That will ensure that two applications of different versions can run simultaneously, because when I create a Synapse, uh, Synapse repository, the application will also copy all those important DLLs and EXE and the binary files that is needed from the operating system to run. So it will ensure that everything is made into a single package. So whenever I double click on that particular image, it can run without any operating system at all. It has a virtual operating system inside. And with Synapse 5, the Synapse 5, which got recently released, we can also support 64-bit applications. Earlier before, before Synapse 5, Synapse 4.6 and other versions, we supported only 32-bit applications, but now we can also support 64-bit applications. All 64-bit applications like Microsoft Office or anything is there. We can port it. We can virtualize using Synapse and provide it on the desktop, either physical desktop or a virtual desktop also. It is not just limited to a virtual desktop. We can also port Synapse to a physical desktop also.
So this is all about horizon view. Coming to the next layer, horizon workspace. So when I speak about workspace, it's all mobile, right? When it is mobile, what the user is interested? Whenever a user is not interested in a desktop today, what he needs is two things. One is his data. He should be able to access his data from anywhere. Second is he should be able to access his applications. Maybe personal applications or official applications. Maybe anything. That should be a single portal where he has the link to everything. And the last but the least is obviously that there is still he would need desktop for certain things. Maybe if that is also available over web, he will be very happy. Maybe on the mobile 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 phones or something, he will be very happy. These are three things that IT has to manage to provide end user freedom to get into mobile world. So. Horizon Workspace also provides the same thing. In Horizon Workspace, we have three segments. One is Horizon Workspace data, which takes care of your data data of the users. Second is Horizon Workspace app, which takes care of your applications. And the last thing is nothing but the desktop. So with Horizon Workspace, you get absolutely the same thing what you got in the uh, virtual desktop infrastructure. The only two things that you get different is one is multi-device access. You can access it from multiple types of devices. And then the next important thing that you can have is collaboration. So when I speak about this Horizon Workspace data, what is it all about? It is nothing but an enterprise Dropbox. You have a Dropbox for your organization where you can save your files, share it with multiple people, share it with multiple people either privately within your organization or publicly out of the organization and ensure all those credentials like read, write, read only permissions, everything is provided to those users for access. And security is also on the topmost priority for the entire thing. You can choose who is the guy who is supposed to see these files and who is not supposed to. IT has the entire control over here. Apart from that, you can also set quotas for each and every user. And above, above all, all these files and everything can be accessed from any device, any time. Suppose if you are a project based company and if you are working on a say, multiple people are working on a single file, you can also create multiple versions of the same file so that you can review it later. Who changed what, everything can be reviewed later. All these things are possible in Horizon Work Data. So, when I speak about workspace, these are the three things that you will be seeing as per the slide. First thing on the left hand side topmost is nothing but your desktop that is assigned to you. You can see your three desktops have been assigned. It is not just your virtual machine. Even your physical machines also can be ported over here. Second is you can also have Horizon applications. All the applications that is uh, that is inbuilt to your organization. Everything is single with single sign-on. Everything is possible. And the last thing is your data. You can preview your data. You can check it. You can also rewrite your data can share it with multiple people. These are the three screens that you will normally view from your desktop or laptop. The same thing can also be ported to your laptops also. But when I'm, when I'm saying all these things, for IT, the control, everything is from a single dashboard. We have a single, for a single control where we can monitor and manage the entire application, the entire user control, whatever he's speaking about. This is what Horizon Workspace can bring. So on the whole, when I speak about Horizon Suite, for users, it is about consistency in access. Second thing is it separates personal from business and you can have a choice on any device. It is not, it is no more device centric. For IT, everything is integrated together. So management is from single console. Policies are there for each and every user not for the devices, the devices can be anything and at last they have a control where they can centrally manage and secure their IP from any fraud or anything. This is what Horizon Workspace and the entire Horizon Suite can bring for IT organizations who are looking for end user computing. Thank you.